In this video, I'll go over new and improved Hyper-V features. Both Windows Server Technical Preview 2 as well as Hyper-V have a number of new and enhanced features, some of which would apply primarily to hosting providers, whether they be public or private providers. But there are also many options that apply regardless of the size of your network. For example, here in the Hyper-V Manager GUI, when I go to connect to another server to manage, I now have the option of specifying an alternate set of credentials. Additionally, besides just connecting by hostname, I can also connect via IP address. When we're managing a Hyper-V host in the Hyper-V Manager GUI, and we go to build a new virtual hard disk, in the wizard we now have an option to build a VHD set. This is a format that's used for shared virtual hard disks, which allows online resizing. It also lets us back up a guest VM without a backup agent even running in that guest. So VHD sets work well with guest clusters. If we look at the settings of a virtual machine, even one that's running, we'll notice that we have the option to hot add or remove some hardware like network adapters. We can also make changes to some of the memory configuration while it's running. There's also a new type of checkpoint or snapshot called a production checkpoint. In the past, we used what were called standard checkpoints, which were really designed to be used only in a test or lab environment. But production checkpoints, like the name implies, are designed to be used in production. But before you can use production checkpoints, your virtual machine version needs to be up to the latest version. On a Hyper-V host, we can use the get-vm command to list virtual machines. And what we're interested in here is the version column where we currently see version 6.2. Now, if you were coming straight from Windows Server 2012 with the virtual machine, the version would be 5, and you wouldn't be able to enjoy the newer features like production checkpoints. So, to upgrade the virtual machine version, because it's a manual process, it doesn't happen automatically, we would use the update-vm version commandlet. Now, your virtual machine would have to be shut down while you do this update. Let's go back to the virtual machine settings. In the left-hand navigator, I'm going to go down under SCSI controller where I'm going to expand the virtual hard disk and I'll choose quality of service. Now, if you're wondering, is that a new feature? It's not. It was there before where we could set a minimum or maximum disk IOPS value. The whole idea was to try to make sure that no single virtual hard disk would chew up all of the disk I.O. However, it's on a single virtual hard disk. It doesn't scale well in a data center. So a new feature is that in PowerShell or using System Center Virtual Machine Manager, we can configure quality of service policies. Let's start at the PowerShell level, where we can get a list of commands that have storage QoS in their name. We would use the new dash storage QoS policy command to build a new storage quality of service policy. And it could apply to a number of virtual machines where we would specify a minimum and maximum number of IOPS. Now, that could apply in total to all the virtual machines in question or to each virtual hard disk. If you've downloaded and installed System Center Virtual Machine Manager, you can also work with your QoS policies here by going to your Fabric Workspace, then in the left-hand navigator under Storage, go into QoS Policies and right-clicking and building a new one. Here I'll just quickly call it policy one. And we can see on the next page in the wizard, we're being asked for a minimum and maximum IOPS value that we could apply to either all virtual disk instances or resources allocated to each virtual disk instance. So this way we can apply disk IO balancing, if you will, across a number of virtual machines and not just a single hard disk at a time. We also have the option now when we build a Generation 2 virtual machine running Linux to support the Secure Boot standard. Now, when we build a new virtual machine, much as we could in Server 2012 R2, for instance, we have the option of designating the virtual machine as either Generation 1 or Generation 2. But if we want to use newer features, such as Secure Boot with Linux guests, then we'd have to have a Generation 2 virtual machine. But there's a little more to it than just that. So to enable Secure Boot within a Linux guest, we would use the set-vm firmware commandlet. At the same time, let's get a list of commandlets that have TPM in their name. TPM is the Trusted Platform Module, and another new feature in Hyper-V is that we can enable virtual TPM within a guest virtual machine. We can do that using the add-vm-tpm commandlet. Now, what would this let us do? What's the point? 
One of the great things about this is that things that require a TPM, such as the Windows BitLocker disk volume encryption feature, will now work in a Windows guest, where previously it wouldn't. Bear in mind, though, before you can enable VMTPM support for a virtual machine, you want to make sure that your Hyper-V host supports the TPM 2.0 standard. Virtual TPM is also a component of shielded VMs, or virtual machines. Shielded VMs is a new feature that will definitely appeal to hosting providers. It's designed to protect customer virtual machines from snooping or unscrupulous host provider administrators or malware. So shielded VMs can use the virtual TPM where the virtual machine has encryption keys to protect data within the VM. We can use SCVMM, the System Center Virtual Machine Manager, or Windows Azure to manage these keys. Let's flip over to PowerShell though, because if we want to enable shielded VMs to run on this Hyper-V host, then it has to be what's called a trusted host. One of the ways that we do that is by adding a role to our server called the Host Guardian Service. So I'm going to go ahead and select my server, and in the list of roles, I'm going to select the Host Guardian Service. Now, the Host Guardian service has many functions, but one of them is to include the distribution of keys which allow shielded virtual machines to run on this trusted virtualization host. So in the end, hosting provider administrators would be able to start or stop shielded virtual machines, but they would not be able to see or modify anything within the virtual machine. This means that more customers will feel safe with running their IT workloads in a provider's environment. In this video, we went over new and improved Hyper-V features.